Black Bottom area of Detroit was once the most prosperous black neighborhood in Detroit. However, through years of urban redevelopment designed to benefit the residents of the blighted neighborhood, the black community in Detroit became increasingly fractured, spread across the city, and disadvantaged. In 1827, the Black Bottom area of Detroit was founded by French settlers. The area was given its name due to the dark, rich, arable soil of the area. During the 1920s, Black Bottom was its most prosperous. Black-owned businesses, homes, apartments, and medical facilities lined Hastings Street. Nearly the entire population of Black Bottom were successful black professionals. Black Tuesday marked the greatest stock market crash in American history and severely affected the Black Bottom neighborhood. Many of the businesses shut their doors and countless residents suddenly were unemployed. The demographic makeup of Black Bottom in the late 1930s and early 1940s was nearly 95% black individuals. The green dots on the map denote black residents, while the orange dots denote white residents. Due to the persistent unemployment following the stock market crash, many individuals opened up their homes to boarders, causing a continued decline in the quality of housing in Black Bottom. In 1935, to rectify the continuing issue of urban blight, Franklin D. Roosevelt proposed the nation's first black housing development, the Brewster Housing Projects. This project cut out a portion of the Black Bottom neighborhood. However, residents were enthusiastic for the new construction and invited Eleanor Roosevelt to a groundbreaking ceremony for the new project. In 1938, a portion of the Brewster projects were open for residents to move. 701 units were built in the area, but didn't accommodate all of the displaced residents. Therefore, on June 4, 1941, the federal government funded, along with the city of Detroit, more housing for residents. The city of Detroit, with funding from the federal government, began constructing homes for displaced individuals from Black Bottom called the Sojourner Truth Housing Project. It was built next to, the, to a white neighborhood, and the white residents actively picketed outside the building site. This prevented countless residents from moving in for months until April 1942, when 1,100 city and state police officers escorted the 163 new black families into their homes at the Sojourner Truth Housing Project after aggressive protests had been preventing them from entering their new homes. December 7, 1941 marked the beginning of the United States' involvement in World War II and spiked a large migration of black workers to Detroit to contribute to the war efforts within the city's factories. Many homes within Black Bottom still lacked indoor plumbing and proper foundations, and the rising population contributed to the blight of the area. This created more issues for the continually degrading housing options in Black Bottom. From June 20th to the 22nd of 1943, the first Detroit riots occurred and damaged portions of Black Bottom. The riot was largely due to notorious racism within Detroit, specifically with white homeowners establishing coalitions to exclude blacks from their neighborhoods. 25 black individuals were killed by white police officers and National Guardsmen. The poor housing for black citizens of Detroit grew worse from there on. In February 1945, a proposal was brought forward by Mayor Edward J. Jeffries to build a large freeway connecting the growing suburbs of Detroit to the downtown area known as the Detroit Expressway and Transit System. A total of $240 million was laid out in the proposal. The tract of land designated for construction in the proposal fell directly through the heart of Black Bottom, essentially insinuating that it would be leveled. The Housing Act of 1949, signed by President Harry Truman, called for slum clearance within urban areas. Black Bottom was demarcated as one of those areas. In 1952, 
the entirety of the Brewster housing projects and Frederick Douglass Towers were completed and housed thousands of low-income black families. On June 29, 1956, the fate of Black Bottom was essentially sealed. President Eisenhower signed the Federal Aid Highway Act, pledging 90% of the funds required to build the project to come from federal aid. With the construction of this interchange, the heart of Black Bottom would be destroyed, separating the neighborhood by a six-lane superhighway. The majority of the displaced residents took up lodging in the recently completed Frederick Douglass Towers, a high-rise project complex built near the Brewster Projects completed in 1938. In 1963, with dwindling housing options for the people displaced from Black Bottom, Detroit Mayor Louis Miriani proposed the Gratiot Redevelopment Area Redevelopment Project, also known as Lafayette Park. The new plans called for housing improvements for 1,810 families, 350 of those in single-story units, and 1,460 in high-rise towers. It would cost $12,216,000. This proposed area would level the remainder of the historic Black Bottom neighborhood. In 1967, the completion of Lafayette Park marks the end of Black Bottom, as the neighborhood is now occupied by I-375 and Lafayette Park. The majority of the black population of Black Bottom moved to the east side of Detroit, leaving their once prosperous area. By 1970, Lafayette Park was now housing almost exclusively white middle-class residents, eliminating the black population from their formerly thriving neighborhood. Black Bottom, which previously housed a 95% black population, was now housing a 77% white population. Lafayette Park has long been considered a quality example of urban renewal. However, its negative effects on the former Black Bottom residents are still felt today in the city of Detroit. After years of serious disrepair in the Brewster housing projects and Frederick Douglass Towers due to a growing number of residents moving to suburban towns and general degradation, the structures were completely abandoned. The complete abandonment of the Frederick Douglass Towers left an eyesore on the Detroit skyline. A formerly prosperous development for working blacks and hub for Detroit musicians was now windowless and uninhabited. In 2014, the Detroit Housing Commission were awarded $6.5 million for the demolition of the Frederick Douglass Towers, marking the end of the Brewster Douglass projects. The inhabitants of the Black Bottom neighborhood were forsaken and neglected when the Detroit Expressway and Transit System and Gratiot Redevelopment urban renewal projects were proposed. Black Bottom residents did not see their neighborhood as an example of blight, but rather a prosperous example of African American business ownership and success. The uprooting of the former Black Bottom neighborhood has left lasting impacts on the city of Detroit that are continually felt today.